I speak to you in the name of God, who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. At a college graduation a few weeks ago, the president of a nearby university said, we sit in the shade of trees we did not plant. His simple words summoned forth a sense of gratitude in his university's newest alumni and imparted to them a sense of purpose. They benefited from the vision and the loyalty of their predecessors and future generations of students would benefit from theirs. At Church of the Holy Communion, we also sit in the shade of trees we did not plant. Almost none of us were here in 1938 when Emma Voorhees gave $10,000 to build the Chapel of the Holy Communion where Sprouts Market sits today. Only a precious few of us were here on New Year's Day in 1950 when a parade of station wagons moved folding chairs down Perkins Road for the first service in this church building. Only a few more of us were here in 1953 when Holy Communion created a permanent home for St. Mary's Episcopal School, giving it room to develop into one of the finest institutions of Episcopal education in the United States. On the table in my study, I have a picture of Holy Communion that was taken exactly one week after it opened. At the time, our church building was nothing more than the nave and what is now the sacristy. We are perched high upon a barren hill. There are no other buildings visible in the picture and hardly any trees. I realize even the mighty oaks that define these grounds were planted by our predecessors, planted as a gift for us. Yet we do not build for building's sake, and we do not plant for planting's sake. We build and we plant with a reason and with a purpose. The prayer book teaches us that the mission of the church is to restore all people to unity with God and each other in Christ. Put another way, the mission of the church is to bring about the kingdom of God. This morning's reading from the Revelation to St. John the Divine reminds us of our high calling. The passage is drawn from the very last chapter in the whole Bible. Everything else in the Bible is prelude to this moment. Every story, every teaching, every word points us here. In the Bible's final scene, God establishes a peaceable city where God dwells personally with all his people. Within this new Jerusalem, all forms of pain and suffering are abolished. Through this new Jerusalem flows the river of life, clear as crystal. Over this new Jerusalem hang the boughs of the tree of life, a tree that humanity has not seen since we left the Garden of Eden. Standing within the walls of the new Jerusalem and under the shade of the boughs of the tree of life, Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last the beginning and the end. The story of salvation is humanity's journey away from God and ultimately its journey back to God again. Our purpose as people of faith in every generation is to find our way back to God and to help others do the same. We sit in the shade of trees we did not plant, and we plant trees whose shade we may not see. 
the idea that one generation of the faith lays the foundation for the next is as old as our faith itself. Another college president, speaking in a different place at a different time, writes this. God's books are printed leaf by leaf. Moses, shepherd though he was, could not have written the 23rd Psalm. King David could not have penned the works of Isaiah. Even Paul saw only in part. It is the attainment of each period that makes possible the next. None is independent. None is final. Only God is infallible. Church of the Holy Communion cannot claim perfection in everything we have done in the projects that we celebrate today. Our successors may wonder why we did this thing or that thing, but they will never wonder about our purpose. This community of God's faithful people seeks to ensure that the redeeming love of Jesus Christ will be proclaimed from this corner for the next 70 years just as it has for the last 70 years. Imagine the children of this parish 70 years from now. Imagine them telling the story of this day. Imagine them saying that in a time when Christianity was said to be in decline, Church of the Holy Communion created a world-class facility in which God's people could gather and pray, in which God's word could be taught and proclaimed, in which God's love could be celebrated and shared. Imagine the children of this parish saying that we did not create a new ministry facility, but instead restored the facility that had been given to us by our ancestors. The letter to the Ephesians gives us a prayer to pray at moments like this. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to Him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. In the foreground of the picture that I keep in my study, The picture of Holy Communion in its earliest days, high upon a barren hill, stands a man dressed in his Sunday best. An inscription on the back of the picture reads, James O. Hull helped to build this church. I recently learned that James O. Hull was a carpenter on Holy Communion's original construction crew. I also learned that his great-great-grandson was one of the parish choir's section leaders last year. James O. Hall did help to build this church, and so did his great-great-grandson, and so did Emma Voorhees, and Eric Greenwood, and Charles Crump, and Reynolds Cheney, and everyone else in this parish family, past, present, and as yet to come. Though buildings change and generations pass, the mission of this church remains the same. Every chapter that we write and every leaf that we turn serve the single purpose of moving us closer to the new Jerusalem, closer to the final amen, after which we and all of God's people will dwell as one with Him forever. So, in the words of our Lord, come, and let everyone who hears say, come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let the doors of this place be open. Let the message of God's resurrection and redemption ring forth from this place, and let God's people come. Let all of God's people come without exception or qualification, without limitation or impediment, so that we might all drink together from the river of life that flows from the throne 
of God. Amen.